Ohio, the Buckeye State, known for its heavy industry and home to more than 11 million people. But there is also a rural and wild side to the state. Eastern Ohio, a place where eyewitnesses have long told stories of a creature that evokes the fear of a bogeyman. But these monster tales may be rooted in a real creature that eyewitnesses continue to report. They call it the grass man. It had long, uh, flowing hair around its shoulders and something came up over the ridge, black, broad shoulders. It was a, a massive uh, individual. It did walk under a limb that uh, later on we measured at 10 feet high. It's typically described as human-like because of the fact that it's walking up right on two legs. It, you know, he's shaped like a linebacker with a broad shoulders, broad back, uh, no neck, small head, you know, up into the neck area. Very large muscular arms, very long arms. Most eyewitnesses describe the grass man as seven to eight feet tall walking upright with broad shoulders and black to brownish hair. The creature is also said to have a very muscular build with large hands and feet. Reports of the grass man date back as far as 1869. On January 23rd in Galea County, a man and his daughter were enjoying a stroll when a wild man leapt at the father. After a long and violent struggle between the man and the beast, the daughter picked up a rock and threw it at the creature, striking it in the head, allowing the man and his daughter to escape. They described the creature as gigantic in size, with burning eyes and being covered in hair. In the book A Buckeye Boyhood, William Venable described a gorilla-like creature that was particularly fond of the taste of cowardly blood. Its fearsome aggression became legend. It was used to sort of uh, warn children. You would say to your children, uh, don't go out of the yard or the grass men will get you. Christopher Murphy is a historian and author who has documented the many grass man accounts. He says the accounts all describe a strange, unknown primate. It is the same thing as the Sasquatch or the Bigfoot, although it has some different characteristics. And generally speaking, it is an ape-like, man-like creature, stands over six feet tall, covered in hair, that has been seen a lot in Ohio. Their European people, when they came here, they saw them, they figured they were some kind of a native, they were in the grass, so they got the name Grassman. While stories of an ape-like creature roaming the forests of Ohio seem improbable, there is lots of evidence to be analyzed. The first time I saw it, it was laying upright like this. And that's when I thought it was a dog at first. One such piece is a skull that doesn't seem to belong in Ohio. Jody Cook found it in 2006. And I went into an area um, where I saw uh, a lot of buzzards, and there was some buzzards up on the roost area. So I decided to go up, up on the hillside there, and I noticed on one of the roosts there was a skull. The buzzards suggest that whatever it was had died recently. Cook has seen the skulls of bears, cats, coyotes, and says this is different. To learn more, he sent the skull to primatologist Esteban Sarmiento in New York. It's been cut at or, or eaten by something because it's missing most of the, the brow ridge and part of the upper nose. Sarmiento has over 30 years of experience as a primatologist and is familiar with the skulls of most known primates. It looks like it was really a wild African animal by, by the bony deposition. I mean, I, I could be wrong, but I would think this would have had to have been transported from Africa. It doesn't take long for Sarmiento to come to a conclusion. It's a male baboon. That's what it is. But how could a baboon's skull find its way to eastern Ohio? What are the reasons that people bring in animals? We have circuses, we have zoos, we have medical research. Sarmiento has also heard the grass man stories and says a baboon does not look like what eyewitnesses are describing. They don't walk on two legs. Sometimes when they feed, they stand on two legs around bushes. Far away, be a dog. I don't think there's anything else they could be mistaken for. 
At roughly three to four feet high, a baboon is much shorter than the grassman descriptions of seven to eight feet tall. To many, the grassman looks more like a Bigfoot, a description that conforms to the turn of the century reports, as well as modern day accounts. Dream Elkins lives in Pleasant City, Ohio, 85 miles east of Columbus, the capital. Her home is in a rural wooded area, regularly visited by local wildlife. But in 1996, she claims something else paid her a visit. So I was here by myself. I had gone to bed uh, somewhere about 10, 10.30 that night, I guess. When I woke up and, and I looked at my dog, um, she was looking towards those windows. The first thing I thought was there was somebody was trying to break into my house because there was a figure in the window making the same growling noises that my dog was making, but then it would sniff the air. Eventually, Elkins worked up the courage to get a closer look. Whatever possessed me to get out of bed, I got up and I came towards the window and it turned and walked off towards my shed. And it was down to my shed within five or six steps. But when I got to the window, it turned around and looked back at me. It was at this point she claims she could clearly see the creature's face. It had big wide shoulders and I could see its eyes. It had big wide set eyes and it had a wide nose and it had a big mouth. For amateur researchers like Jody Cook, the Elkins account is just the tip of the iceberg. Cook claims to have found even more evidence that an unknown primate inhabits eastern Ohio. Yeah, we found a sheltered area. Um, it was more like an igloo. It was completely hollow on the inside. On February 19, 1995, Cook and two other men were investigating some recent sightings outside of Akron. What they found was unlike anything they had seen before. These three photographs taken by Cook show what he refers to as a possible primate nest or shelter. The structure was very unique in the way it was just it was formed. Uh, the branches, the grass, and everything was interwoven. Uh, it took some time to, to do this. The nest measured 10 feet long and about 3 feet wide. Hollow on the inside with enough room to fit three adult men. The way they're constructed, it was interwoven perfectly like, like you're, you're building a quilt. It was the best way to describe it. it. It was just done very creatively. The foundation was constructed of large branches with smaller branches woven in between. It appears to be covered with long grass and other forest material to provide protection from the elements. Return trips to the area for additional research proved unsuccessful. Actually, we uh, went back on two different occasions to uh, look, but the area is just so overgrown with um, large grass, weeds and stuff, it was very hard to find. Um, the second time we went up there, and it's been completely mowed down in that area, so there was actually no structure there at all. Have not ever seen it again. Jody Cook has decided to join with researcher Don Keating in the search for answers to this Ohio mystery. Their plan? To obtain and examine the best existing grassman evidence and to search for nests and new clues in an area very able to support a creature like grassman. The baboon skull, the nests, and over a dozen eyewitness sightings all have been discovered within a region coined the Sasquatch Triangle. Within that area, the researchers have focused their expedition in Salt Fork State Park. You've got 20 to 25,000 acres of water and land combined. Uh, you're nestled in the hills of eastern Ohio on the foothills of the Alleghenies. There's plenty of area around here for anything like that to be roaming and not be detected for quite some time. Don Keating is chairman of the Eastern Ohio Bigfoot Investigation Center. He says what makes Salt Fork stand out above all are the potential hiding spots for grassman. Salt Fork State Park, uh, it's the largest state park in Ohio. Uh, you have a lot of uh, opportunity for a Bigfoot or any other animal to exist off the land. Um, there's just plenty of food, water, and shelter out here. And if you've got those natural resources, and you do, uh, then anything can exist out here. Joining the team are Chris Bergen and Greg Alderman, 
bringing a new perspective to the search for Grassman. They will explore the wilderness from above with radio-controlled helicopters equipped with high definition and thermal cameras. These helicopters are used for uh, military, for law enforcement, uh, SWAT teams. The military is using them for surveillance purposes, for carrying uh, some radar equipment for testing. Bergen is owner of Bergen RC Helicopters in Michigan. He's been brought to Ohio by MonsterQuest to fly his custom helicopters above the park in an effort to find evidence of Grassman. The plan is simple. Since sightings in the area indicate that Grassman is a nocturnal animal, the first flight is intended to familiarize Bergen with the area and identify possible habitat or hiding areas. Bergen will then relaunch at night using a quieter battery-operated helicopter fitted with a thermal camera to detect any heat signatures on the ground. I'm going to put the helicopter up as high as I can comfortably, uh, keeping it within sight and keeping it hopefully below the turbulent air coming across the top of the trees. And uh, we'll try and keep it as smooth and steady as possible and see what kind of pictures we get. The camera mount includes a video downlink system with a little white box under the front of it. So the person that's operating the camera can see um, what the camera sees through a uh, monitor on the ground. It's up to the camera operator to verify the shot and to keep it on target. The mount does include a gyro to help stabilize in the tilt axis only, but we have full control in pan and tilt. If we hard mount the camera to the helicopter, if the helicopter vibrates, the camera vibrates. So we're basically soft mounting. I'm going to come up, I'm going to fly out over here, turn sideways, and then go up this way. How's your video, Greg? It's in and out, but I got it now. Okay. I'm going to come over the top of the tree, and I'm going to take a walk. The expansive aerial view allows the team to search the area for movement or nests for miles around. It is far more efficient than scouting on foot, but it is not without its challenges. Wind is, wind is definitely buffeting upstairs above the trees. But Video looks good, that one I can see it. Good. Bergen struggles to keep the helicopter steady against the force of the wind. After a turbulent but successful run, Bergen brings the chopper in. Now they must wait until darkness to launch the thermal camera. If the grass man does live here, this may be the best way to capture an image of the creature. But according to Don Keating, that image may already exist. Photographic evidence of the Ohio grass man is the goal of this Monster Quest expedition. But according to Don Keating, it may already exist. In August of 1992, Keating received reports of a grass man sighting in an area about an hour from Salt Fork State Park. He went to investigate and brought his video camera along to film the small wilderness area. It was in a area of Coshocton County, Ohio, known as Woodbury Wildlife Area. I had the camcorder up on my shoulder. Uh, I left it recording, didn't turn it off.